five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the most infected city in America, New York, New York. The city so nice they infected it twice. It's Alex Bennett with the ramble, and we're here uh, from now until uh, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Almost wasn't going to do this show tonight because what I did was this afternoon. I uh, went on and I went on Facebook and just did an impromptu uh, show, uh, just you know, to have something to do, to do something with something here. And uh, uh, we, uh, I didn't think anybody would call, and as it was, we had seven people call the program, and we had a very nice discussion. And I also thank Jason, our one of our regulars, for joining us. And uh, Rob, for regular, uh, regular one of our, uh, can I try that again? Uh, who's one of our regulars uh, to try it again? That uh, he was here. He, honey, him, him. I can't talk straight. I've got a headache. I, as soon as I get a headache, I run in and take my temperature, and I took it, and it was ninety-eight point two, and then I took it again, and it was ninety, uh, ninety-seven point six. So I'm okay. This thing is just getting to me. Just absolutely getting to me. Oh, my God. You know, it just it's just amazing how it, uh, how it has just, this whole thing has just gotten way out of hand. Uh, we are now at least one month into our isolation. And uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. Uh, I'm getting... Uh, squirrely, and uh, I really want to go out, but I can't go out uh, because I might die. So, you know, that's a nice thing. Oh, you know, sorry, I, I, I look at this quickly. I've got to go out. I, I forgot my coffee. I, I left it out there. Uh, so here, for a moment, uh, take a look at this, okay? That's our map of uh, the uh, coronavirus around the world. I'm running out of here. and I forgot to uh, uh, go get it, okay? So it was sitting out there getting cold. Anyway, there's our map, okay? I, had, I hope you had a good chance to look at it for about 30 seconds. Boy, was that a run. Plus, uh, Marjorie's in the bathroom using it. She, she, goes, she pees so much during the middle of the night, I'm beginning to think she has a prostate instead of me. Anyway, uh, look at that map. Look at that. Look at that. L look at that map. Look at me. Look at that map. Look at me. Look at that map. Okay. Anyway, we have hit over a million and a half people worldwide. Okay. See that up there? In fact, can I double click on it? And we can just, yeah, we can do that. There it is, folks. Total confirmed. 1,514,866, and that's the total confirmed, all right? The rest were baptized. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all week. Let's go to the U.S. Here's what we got. What, ready for the big number? Drum roll. Okay, big drum roll. 431,838 in the United States, okay? All righty. That means that here in New York, we have hit an even 500 deaths right there. I don't know if you can see it up there. I, I have it highlighted. Um, 446 deaths in Wayne, Michigan. I guess that's Michigan in general. So 
Oh, boy. This is not good. And I'm out of breath now. Why? Because I had to run out there, and I haven't been working out. In Spain, which is the second most... Well, actually, see, they've got more than we do. Although, wait a minute, hold on a second. They've got slightly more than we do by about... Uh, if my addition is right, 14 people. <laughs> uh, but the number of cases in Spain is 148,000 as opposed to our 431,000. So on a, uh, a, a, a percentage basis, they are doing far worse than we are. I mean, they really are hurting. You go to Italy, which used to be the standard for for bad stuff, and they're now down to 139,422, but they've got 17,000, um, 17,669 deaths, okay, total deaths, uh, 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 out of 139. Ours, again, is 431, okay, that's uh, two and a half times what uh, that is. And yet, we've got 14,000, they've got 17,000. Not good. France, 10,000 deaths on 113,000 people. See, I mean, uh, I know we look like we're doing badly, but when you compare that, see, we've got 14,000. If you compare that to France, in percentage-wise, uh, they've got more deaths per 1,000 than we do. Uh, and Germany, uh, you got only 2,349 deaths. China, 3,337 deaths. Everybody is saying, oh, okay, we probably can't uh, 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 believe what the Chinese have to say. And you probably are right. But I want you to look at China. If you go down here, uh, see right here where I'm moving that stuff around? Okay. See that, see that, see that, see that, see that, see that, see that. This is, um, uh, they flattened the curve, and they started flattening the curve in February. It went up here, this is the height, and then it's, it's still going up just ever so slightly. But, um, you know, now on the other hand, you go to the U.S. and uh, uh, take a look at this. Boy, did we, between March... Let's see here, 12th, okay, and today, which is April 7th, uh, look how much we've jumped, all right? A uh, couple other countries, Iran, uh, they, they're not doing too well. They've got uh, totally confirmed, um, what, uh, let's see here, they, oh, they're doing, oh, they're, they're in bad shape, Iran. Let me, let me do this again. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. They've got uh, 1,500, uh, 1,514, total confirmed, okay? But the death rate, okay, is so much higher. Total deaths, 88. Is this right? Am I seeing this right? Yes, I am. Uh, 88,444. Wow. And that's on uh, one and a half million uh, people that were, and we're at, uh, what are we at? We're at, we're only, in a, okay, they really are just hurting. Oh, man. Oh, wait a minute. Now I clicked it again and I've only got 60. Oh, oh. oh there we go. No, 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 no. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is their total here. They're, they're at uh, six, uh, 64,586, okay? Uh, that's the number of people, and they got th almost 4,000 total deaths. Okay, I, somehow that thing wasn't clicking right. United Kingdom, uh, 7,111 deaths out of 61,474 people. Uh, total recovered, you know, I don't understand this. Out of all of that, only 345 people totally recovered? Really? I, I find that hard to believe, but anyway. 
Anyway, this is 184 countries, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 184 countries uh, and regions. Okay, so that is uh, uh, what this map is all about. Oh, boy. And, of course, here in New York, you know, again, we just hit the 500 deaths. It says 500 deaths in Nassau, New York. Okay, it's 4,571 here in New York City. Let me, uh, yeah, let me see here. Um, hmm. Well, I, I haven't got another way of bringing it up. But anyway, we have a, we're, we're you know, we're death city here. The number, however, the numbers have, uh, have changed today. Uh, and let me explain them to you for a second. We had the most people die yesterday, of any time during the coronavirus, something like 750 people, something like that, I think. It may be a little higher than that. But we had more people um, released from the hospital than were admitted to it. Okay, that's for starters. Now, what this all means is this is all kind of good news rather than bad news. Yeah, we had more people die yesterday than ever died before. I think if you go over to, uh, uh, where, where is it? Uh, uh, do we have Drudge here? Do I have Drudge? No, I guess I don't have Drudge up here. Um, but Drudge was saying, worst day ever in New York and so on and so forth. And yeah, it was terrible. It was horrible. It was the worst amount, most amount of people that got died. But... We had less intubations, uh, less admissions, more people being let out of the hospital. And all those people who died were people who had been there for weeks and weeks and weeks. This has been building up. And, you know, each day that somebody was still intubated and not uh, off breathing apparatus is one more day that they were getting closer to death. Okay. And today was the day they, that the bill came due. Okay. Now, I don't know if tomorrow will be any better, but what it means is the amount of people who are coming down with it is diminishing and that our uh, uh, di distance thing, our socially, being socially distant, and uh, which I've always been, as I say, uh, socially distant and uh, uh, the uh, social distancing and also just, just you know, wearing a face mask on, on your face. Well, that's the only place they go. Um, uh, are all helping, and that we can't, uh, uh, and they keep using the term, we can't let our foot off the gas, and the fact is we can't let our foot off the gas. Our foot is uh, firmly stuck onto the gas, and uh, that's a problem. Uh, hold on a second, I gotta just make sure something's happening here. Okay, all right, uh, there, there's, I gotta do something here just uh, for me here. Uh, so that I see everything in the same place. Okay, there we go. And um, there, okay. Um, we can't let our, ourselves off the gas. Our We've got to keep doing what we're doing. We can't think that all of a sudden because things are getting better, oh, we're, we're fine, we're going to be okay, we're going to be terrific, yeah, no problem, right? No, a lot of problems. We have to keep doing this and doing this until... We literally strangle the, 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 the juice out of this, out of this uh, um, flu. And uh, we can do it. We can do it. Uh, neither Marjorie and I have been out for days. Uh, Marjorie went out one day, I think it was maybe Monday, she went to the store. And uh, I felt very, I didn't like her doing that. And I've now told her, I forbid you from even going out. Even if we sit here and starve, we're eating, we're eating lint, okay? I mean... And we got some stuff in the freezer, and we can get inventive, and there are a lot of eggs. We can always make eggs, and there's a lot of bacon. We can make bacon, and there's some ham, and we can have the ham. Uh, tonight we ordered out for, for Italian food, uh, and it's, it's um, uh, a little on the pricey side, but everything's on the pricey side, folks. Uh, really, I mean, uh, things are not cheap. You know, um, uh, Amazon said they weren't going to let any gouging go on on Amazon. And yet I went to Amazon, and everybody's gouging, including Amazon. Um, what did we look up the other uh, for something? Oh, we look, you know, we buy this cheese. Okay, we buy this cheese at Costco, and we get, 
uh, a wedge, it's about like this, okay? I'd say that's approximately, and that runs about maybe $12 or something like that. Um, we went up on and looked for it. It was Jarlsberg, okay? And we were looking at it on the web on Amazon, and a whole wheel, okay, is $325. <laughs> But uh, we went to the store and we bought, you see, that, that's the $12 wedge, okay, that we get at Costco, okay, of, the same, of this particular brand. Well, go like that, okay? And that's what she bought the other day at the grocery store for, I think it was $9. I mean, dude, come on. Everybody's gouging and... I guess most people aren't complaining about the gouging, but, I mean, I think it's terrible. Um, and then if you try to go on Amazon, you want to order something, uh, you might not get it till the end of the month. I want. I have these chocolates I like. I like these Russell Stover's uh, sugar-free chocolates, okay? So I go out and I buy a bag of them uh, for 9 bucks, right? Um, so I went to buy them the other day, and the bag itself was about though 15 bucks and uh it wouldn't it, but the the bad news was it couldn't be delivered till the 28th of april uh, you know by then i i will have lost my jones for russell stover's sugar so then i they had some in big batch for like 35 dollars and they could get it to me by sunday but i mean delivery day times are off i mean forget it you go to the grocery store, all the prices are jacked up. Uh, and then they say, no gouging. Nobody should gouge. Not, you know. Uh, and, and yet uh, it's going on. And Amazon, while saying they will not put up with it, uh, seem to be putting up with it okay. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, let me see here. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, yeah. Last night we... Uh, uh, Phil was lauding Franklin Graham. Uh, Franklin Graham is the bastard son of Billy Graham. Uh, it's not that he was born out of wedlock. It's just that he's a bastard. The guy's a real jerk, okay? Uh, but he was lauding him because they put up these tents in uh, Central Park uh, where they... Uh, uh, put up these tents for coronavirus people, and then they're moving some of them over there to ease the pain uh, of the of the amount of people in uh, 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 Mount Sinai Hospital, which is right across the street. And I don't know how many beds there are in there, but it's something like maybe a hundred beds or something to take 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 the load off. And I always thought uh, that, number one that that you know Mount Sinai had put them there, and then it turns out they hadn't that this uh, little jerk, um, Franklin Graham, uh, had put them there. And um, I went, oh, well, I, I don't like the guy, but geez, doing something awfully nice. And then I was talking today to my friend, Shecky, um, who when he didn't call me back yesterday, I thought, oh my God, he's, he's in the hospital. You know, this first thing that comes to mind. But no, he was okay, he just didn't want to talk to anybody uh which if you want to talk about socially distant he's good at that too anyway so uh he told me oh franklin graham you know what that's about don't you and i said no he said well it's his religious thing it's called samaritan's purse and i said yeah that's what it says on the side of the tent and he says yeah he said do you realize that uh, what what you have to do in order to be a doctor with franklin graham and I said, no. He says, you have to make a pledge to be against gays. You have to sign a pledge saying that you don't believe in homosexuality. And I'm going, you know, on one hand, you're a Samaritan, and on the other hand, you're the devil. You know? I mean, it, and so I, now I don't think so good of him because he, you know, he puts a little proviso here. On, on what uh, what we you know, should do. I'm trying to get this back where it should be. Okay, we did that, and we're doing that, and everything's fine. I'm having, you know, when I, do, when I have to do a show, and at the same time, 
switch everything and make sure that everything's working right, uh, it's not easy, okay? But anyway, um, so I just wanted to uh, uh, make that point, and thanks to Shecky for telling me about, about Franklin Graham and his uh, Samaritan's Purse. That, you know, it, a, a Samaritan is somebody who does something for the good of mankind, but doesn't put a proviso on it, you know? And in this case, Franklin Graham does. Oh, you can come be a doctor for us, but, you know, well, what if you're, what if you're gay and you've got the coronavirus? I wonder, they, they not let you come in at all to there? Anyway, uh, I, 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 and they, they, they haven't got enough beds there that it's made much of a difference, you know. Javits Center has made a difference. The, the ship, uh, the uh, uh, coronavirus <laughs> ship, um, the HMS, uh, we're going to get you well, uh, is, uh, is doing a good job. And there are a lot of other people doing a good job, too. So, Franklin Graham, I, I, I'm not going to lodge you because you, you, when you put a proviso like that on it, I can't, I can't trust you. Anyway, let me uh, turn on the uh, Skype lines. Uh, as I say, I was, I was going to run the show that we ran today. And then I, I forgot to actually make a recording of it, so I had to take it off of Facebook, and then I had to convert it, and it didn't look good enough. And then I thought, and there are people who call this show every night, and they're looking forward to it, some of them, especially in this thing. So I'll do three hours' worth of shows today. What the hell? No big deal. I, I, I'm not going anywhere. I haven't got much of anything to do. But now the lines are open, and if you don't call, I'll start playing the show we did this morning, this afternoon. Which, by the way, for those of you who didn't hear it, it's over on Facebook. It's over on my Facebook page. It's running there uh, right now. Uh, let me see here. Here comes, uh, here comes Jeff. And uh, let me see here. There's Jeff. And uh, here comes Phil. Let me see here. Um, yeah, there's Phil. Now i got to give them a little space on this... Uh, um, on the on the thing here, first of all, oh, wait a minute, Rob Alfano. Oh yeah, Rob was here last night, so he should be right in there. Uh, let me see here. What uh, spaces this afternoon to a bunch of people that never call? Yeah. You know something? It it was wonderful, Phil. Yeah. You know why it was wonderful? Take a guess. But I wasn't there. That's correct, <laughs> Phil. Now let me let me put these people on here first of I all. I can help with that. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. First of all, uh, we'll have Rob Alfano. Okay, he would get him on there. Okay, there's Rob, and then uh, we'll probably put Phil Meyer in the second part here. Um, okay, and we'll put him there. Uh, and then we will take, uh, uh, in the third spot, we'll put, uh, um, oh, let's see here. Let's see, Josh. Where's Josh? Is Josh. There we go. And then uh, we go over to, we get to go to our, our six-pack here, and we go to number four, and that would be, let's see here. We got Rob, we got Ham, we got Tom. Uh, uh, we got to do... Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, let me cancel. Uh, let me, uh, who's got the audio up? I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Can I put in? We need. Um, oh, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Zeller. Uh, let's see here. That would be that one. And then uh, we can. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, there he is. is. The, there he the is. The okay, book is what's name? Hold, hold on you know, a second. Hold on a second. Just shut up, Phil. I'm trying to do something here, okay? Well, uh, who uh, wants uh, to listen uh, to Kvetch? Well, yeah. Uh, here comes Kevin. Okay. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Now, hold on a second. Uh, I, I've got to do these all. All uh, First, I got number five spot. We'll get the hog rider in there. Where is he? Hog rider. Hog rider. Oh, there he is, hog rider. And then finally, uh, who don't, who, who, oh, and Charlie. We got to get Charlie in there. Okay, hold on, Charlie. One more minute, Sorry. and I will get Charlie in there. There's Charles Wallace. He's always very easy to find because he uses his real name there. He doesn't use some kind of numbers and digits and things like that. And hello to everybody. How are you this evening? Hey. Okay, good. 
Hey, Rob. Good to see you again. Yeah, twice in one day. How about twice that? Twice in one day. That was a good little show today, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. fun. All different people. Yeah. Didn't recognize anybody. Yeah, except for uh, uh, Jason was there. So, Jason, right? Yeah, yeah. That was nice. And uh, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Wheeler uh, 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 wrote, wrote me, Josh, and said, are you going to do a show tonight? Because you did one in the afternoon. And I wrote him. I said, yes, we are. And the reason I am is because a lot of people who are calling right now didn't know we were doing that. And then they would turn on. They'd see I'm running this rerun of something. And I didn't want to confuse everybody. So if I do one in the afternoon, uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will do one in the afternoon and try to do one in the evening as well. If I'm really tired, I then will repeat it. But, but I'm not going to do it that much anyway. And uh, uh, also, at night, we'll let anybody on who's gay. But during the day, Franklin uh, Graham says I can't have anybody <laughs> on who's gay. So uh, did, did you sign the declaration with Franklin? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I thought you did. And I'm not even a doctor. So, you know. Well, it doesn't matter. Neither is anybody else that's in that tent city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, so I, it, that really disappointed me because I thought, well, uh, well, it kind of it disappointed me and then it didn't disappoint me. The part that disappointed me was the guy was finally doing something decent and I found out he was being an ass about it. And then uh, then I, I what what were you saying, Charles? It's worse than that. They proselytize at you the whole time you're in that camp. Too. Y yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, you don't need a respirator. God will take care of you. You know, whatever, you know, um, just like those religious people that they interviewed coming out of their church ceremony. And they said, the blood of Jesus is on me. I'm protected. I'm not worried. Yeah. And, and that preacher, you know, let's face it. Most preachers are thieves anyway. You know, mm -hmm. they're simply fleecing a bunch of people based on a myth that maybe they will be going to some place after their death. But, of course, you can't get your money back once you're dead, okay? And you can't go complain to them. Um, and, and this guy wanted to hold his services so he could keep making his money. I mean, terrible. Just terrible. Just terrible. Maybe he just wanted to give people a little bit of solace. Oh, yeah? And a little bit of virus. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Mm. A little bit of COVID, too. Wait a minute, you're breaking up on us a little bit, Charlie. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. What did you say, Charlie? Charlie? I said the, the preacher wanted to give them a little bit of COVID, too. Yeah, a little mm. bit of COVID. A little bit of it, a little bit of that. Anyway. But, uh, it, you know, um, so I was, I was, I would, when I found that out today, I went, ah, well, what do I expect out of him, you know? You do, you do good works because good works, uh, you're repaid in the wonderful feeling you have for doing them, you know? And uh, let me see here. We have somebody here that I've never seen before. Or have I seen you before? Hold on a second. We're going to put him in the number the, the seven slot. Hold on. Uh, let me see. What is, your what, is the, what is the name you're using? Uh, Jeffrey. Wait, talk, talk louder. I can't hear you. Uh, Jeff, I did. Gee, your microphone, Jeff. We, we can't hear your mic. He's is not uh, on the mic. He thinks he's on. I think. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's see. Got to choose. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, can you hear me now? A little better, not that terrific, but we can hear you a little better. Let me see. And it's G. Hurst, right? You haven't called the show before, have you? No, I haven't. Uh, you haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, okay, and uh, let me see here. Uh, and your 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 first name is Jeff. What's your first name? Jeff. Jeff. Okay, Jeff. Okay, we got that down now. Jeff, where are you calling from, Jeff? Uh, British Columbia, north of Revelstoke. Uh, Revelstoke. Huh? No, no, no. Oh. no, no. I'm I'm north of Revelstoke. Oh, you're no north of Revelstoke. Okay, so you're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're not Absolutely. you're not in the middle Absolutely of nowhere, safe. but you can you can see it from where you are. So, pretty much safe from the virus. Oh, there you go. When you move that thing up, we could hear you better. Oh, uh, 
It, it, yeah, you had better. a thing, you just raise your hand. I mean, you were holding it in your hand, and you raised it up, and it's like on your uh, <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I, okay, Maybe it works as an antenna, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You, say, you sound better when you do that. Let me see here. Yeah. We have to add one more person to our crew here, and this is um, Bree, who has suddenly disappeared. I don't know where he went. But uh, I'll put him in here anyway. And can you hear me, Alex? I, we can hear you, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, okay, because I have set up the uh, the microphone thing, and I just have to figure out how to get my voice out of it. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, Bree, back it, off about it. Because Bree, 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 it it kind of looks like you're yes. going to break out into song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a mic holder coming later. I've got two of them coming. I have a light thing coming. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be all set up. And I finally figured out how to get... I have this old M-Box uh, Digi Design thing. Mm -hmm. And I figured out how to get Pro Tools working. And so I can do podcasts and stuff now. And I can record my stuff again. Oh, it's really? been a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know? he, uh, he is coming to us, of course, from Malaysia. How, how's it doing in Malaysia? I, hadn't, I didn't look at the, uh, uh, at the thing to see what, how Malaysia is doing. Uh, here yeah. we go. Here's Malaysia. We're okay. you're, you're at, uh, you're at. Let's see here, four forty one hundred nineteen confirmed cases, sixty five dead. Not too bad. Uh, I think they're doing a good job. We've we've been in partial. Well, we've been locked partial lockdown and then lockdown for over, I guess, a month now, mm -hmm. and um, I think they're doing a good job. Yeah. Um, so far, uh, it's been okay. The the grocery store thing is a little bit of a, you know, uh, it's a little difficult, but you can do it, and yeah. uh, it's all right. Yeah. Jeff, where did you say you were calling from again? Um, Fort St. John, British Columbia. British Columbia. So we got British Columbia, we got Malaysia, and we've got Charlie in Texas <laughs> and Kevin in where, where, where – what – you're in the East Bay, right, Kevin? No, down by Gilroy. Gilroy, Gilroy. Okay, and then we got Phil. He's out Southeast. there in Contra Costa County. We got Josh. He. I keep forgetting where Josh is. Um, he's in Ohio. He's in Ohio, and Rob. Can't tell with all that red. <laughs> Rob, Rob is uh, down there in. Uh, which Virginia are you in? Virginia. Yep. Virginia. Okay. That's an Electra voice there, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, it's an RE20. Yeah, RE20. I've got a Sennheiser 441 well, and an AKG do? something or other. Since so did you this hear one, Bernie bail Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This sounds like a eBay here with everybody. <laughs> here's what my guy have. I'm going to turn this in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, yeah, now, uh, yeah, there, there's a good place for us to start. Bernie. Mm -hmm. Bernie gave up today. Bernie put out the fire today. Well, yeah. I, th I think Bernie realized, okay, that among other things, he's he's got a problem. He had a problem with all this. I think he's a vic he's a victim of the coronavirus in his own way. I um, got ripped off. Now I got a Bernie button and nothing to do with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pictures <laughs> frozen. I don't know if it's just me. Well, there well was, you can use it again in four years. There's a very interesting... It's one from 2016. Yeah, he'll be 82 then. I think I think not too old to be president. He'll still uh, keep running. Yeah, uh, but here's it's like the thing. like Harold Stassen. Here's the thing um, that somebody mentioned today, and I think it's a good point. All the things that Bernie's been calling for, which most people go, oh, he's just a socialist and blah, 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 blah are starting to look a little bit better after this coronavirus, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I knew you'd say that, Phil. Don't be so predictable. It's to socialism, whether we like it or not. Otherwise, we're not getting through this. Well, without. I mean, Phil is hitting up the government for 52,000 52, socialist bucks. Yeah. You know? That uh, they will forgive if I pay my people. Yes, if you pay your people, and but Socialism. still, but still, it's socialism. If I Absolutely. could get it up to a million, I, I'd just take off and go to Belize. Then yeah. you'd have. How a come? Uh, how come uh, Trump's calling up Biden to suck his ass now, huh? Uh, <laughs> I reached out to Trump and said he wanted to talk to him about he it. He reached out to Trump. 
Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, Byron called Trump. No, he didn't call him. No, well, neither don't, of them don't let spoke. don't don't let Trump re reach out to you because he likes to touch pussy. Yeah, yeah. probably got that shit on his hands. Touch your hair <laughs> and suck your face. And uh, have you seen the you know the the Biden shots of him with the little kids? Yeah. Uh, come what on. Those? Well, you know, years from now, what I'll be most interested in is someone who will eventually, eventually, it can't do it now, the, the water is too muddy, to find out all the ways that Trump has benefited financially from, yeah. the, from the situation. I mean, just so many stories coming out about how he owns control and, you know, has some company that, is, that has ties to this drug company and that, his son-in-law owns this or that. I love it. You know, he'll come and say, I'm losing so much money by being president. I'm losing so much money in this. But, you know, it's like Dick Clark in the 1950s. He was very clever to and and, and Alex, you know this better than anyone. Mm -hmm. He was very clever about getting songwriting credits and he had all his little ways of making money. So you wouldn't see it. But he was just filthy rich off of all these other. Well, there were ways, ways of him. Was, the best way to put it is there were ways of him getting payola without breaking the law. You know, so yeah. getting a songwriting credit as an example. So get a songwriting credit for this virus. You know, would be a good thing. So anyway, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna have a sound effect here of crickets every time he tells a joke like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I I must have something like that. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jeff, how are you feeling about things? How are you, you, you... Yeah, it's worrisome. Uh, I, I have two grown daughters, and I'm worried for them more than me. Uh, but apparently, it doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in. It, you know, yeah. If you get a certain strain, it's going to knock you on your ass or possibly kill you. Yeah, yeah. How, how old are you? I'm 53. You're 53. Wow. Okay. I thought you were younger. Yeah. Yeah, so you're over that the the cusp of of when it starts becoming dangerous. Well, no, I mean, like I said, any underlying condition will add to it. Like I, I've got high blood pressure, and uh, my daughters have asthma. Mm -hmm. So any anything that you have against you, and then and that doesn't mean anything either, because people that are perfectly healthy are getting laid out. So it's just hit and miss, right? Like uh, I don't know if you watch uh, Real Time with Bill Maher. He has Seth Rogen or Seth Rogen. Uh, Seth McFarlane on, and he said, look, he had a bag of Skittles with 100 Skittles in a bag and two of them were poison. He wouldn't eat them. He wouldn't try any of them, right? <laughs> the, the odds of, uh, you know, you going out and, like, I, I wear an N95 mask when I go to the store, and I live in a town of 15,000 people, you know, and we're pretty much locked down, but I still don't take that chance. Yeah, oh, no, you, you know, uh, there's no, uh, there's no reason to take any chances yet, right. unless you think you already had it and recovered. Well, well then you don't know, yeah. but you don't but know you that, and, and unfortunately, we don't have enough tests out there to test for that. Um, and the doctors still don't know if you know your how your immunity holds up, or, or it may, you may have immunity, and then again, maybe not. They don't right, know. they don't know enough. Yes, Jeff. Can I just, a non sequitur, I want to apologize to Bill for... I say, do me a favor, Jeff. Do me a favor. Take that. that yeah. But you're using, like, a headset like this, right? There's something, you, yeah. there's something you held up and brought up closer to your mouth, and it's somehow you were, we were hearing you better. Is that better? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Phil, can I apologize to you? Oh, you, you know, I know you're Canadian. That's what Canadians do. <laughs> but that, I... I, I, think, I don't know what I did, but uh, sorry. Apologies. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's what Canadians do. No, for calling you such an asshole and bigot, and wind liquor and a Trump fan and all that. I just, I, I just know what you are really is a really good friend, to Alex, and you're putting on an act. Hey, don't, you're, hey, you're, don't, 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 hey. don't say that. You know, I I makes me look that. terrible. Don't say yeah. that, Jeff. No, I truly support Trump and. Oh. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, and uh, I, uh, I'm a, a generous guy, so I lend Alex some Ooh, of my that hat. It looks like you also support Rembrandt. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony sent me that hat. 
I told him not to send me anything. He sends stuff. I, I, I tell him, I, don't send anything or I'll refuse it. But he sent me this hat. Like, I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, like a lot of people, that, support thank the you office of the presidency. And, yeah. it, you know, it's hard when you see things that are happening. You know, I, I'm always conflicted about it. I, I am not a never-Trumper. I, you know, when he... I actually... During the election, I was, I didn't really care whether it was whether it was Clinton or Trump. I thought if it were Trump, that maybe he could, based on his you know semi celebrity of TV ness, that he could somehow bring people together, that he could change his tune. And and I was completely wrong, wrong about you that. I held out hope that, that the office would change him, that much in the same way that I view the office as an American. And so. He, but he plays on that. He treads I saw, on. I, I saw a documentary a while back in which they had the uh, two of the producers of The Apprentice who said they feel very guilty now because what they did was they made him look better than he was. In other words, they established that credibility by putting him in a chair, lighting him beautifully, you know, writing a script that he used and, 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 and presenting this person who supposedly was take charge. And they said he was nothing like that. And in fact, they had a lot of trouble working with him because he was so bad at it. And that, and, that, and that, any of us in radio, Rob, you'll know this production is always better than the live, you know, cause when you can produce it, you make it look so and sound perfect. Well, that whole conference room they used in there was actually a set they built in an empty room on one of the floors in the in the in the place, and then that whole lobby they go into was also a set that they built in, and they did it all in Trump Tower. But they built sets, and then the perfect lighting and all of that. And they said, we established that this guy had some kind of credibility because we presented him that way on television, and we feel guilty for it now. We want the world to know it was a complete lie. It was television. It was a fabrication. That's what you do on all these things. E even on this show, people light themselves and uh, a and do things to ma to make it look better because they're well, interested. If that bothers you, if that bothers you, Phil, okay, here we go. Well, no, can you turn it down a little more? <laughs> turn it on. There we go. But Phil, you would have a lot more credibility if you were able to, on occasion. Say, say that maybe you know Trump didn't do the greatest job in this particular case, but what? you know you you kind of have a blind following to him on that's, anything, and that's, that's exactly my point. From the I said that to you the other night. If if once in a while you you thought that he went over the line or did something that I mean everything can't be perfect for not and, everybody. And, yeah. and, on, and at the same time, I have also plotted I've given uh, credit to Trump in some cases. So I like to think that I'm, you know, in I, I'm, I'm nonpartisan, that I'm, uh, you know, a centrist, pragmatic, a realist. And I think that that gives me the, a better position because I, I've never if you go back and check the tape, I've never used a swear word with Trump. I've never immediately condemned him for something out of the, you know, out of the hat. Uh, I like to look at everything clearly and to try to, you know, empirically see what's going on. And I can tell you it's not right. It's not right. A lot of the things. But again, it's my respect for the office that keeps me from going further with that. And also the fact that I'm, you know, I'm sitting at home watching things on online. So I may not have all the facts, but I can tell you that I would feel much more comfortable if as I said before, Barack Obama or George Bush were in office right now. I'd feel much more comfortable. I believe, I believe in them. I, I I'm just sorry, but Trump, I, I have a hard. I can't believe in him. Well, uh, you're you're welcome to believe what you want to believe. You know, uh, I happen to believe he's doing the right thing. But on the other hand, you know, you're a smart guy, and I, you know, I I respect the way you uh, approach. Uh, your thoughts. Uh, I happen to disagree with them, and that doesn't make your thoughts wrong, or does it make my thoughts wrong? I have I support him, and you know there's a, there's a there's a thing when you have a when you have a leader, 
And this guy's not breaking the law. He's not doing things. He's not throwing people in the concentration camps. He's he's doing what he feels is right. How and do you know he's not I breaking the law, him, Bill? How do, do these how things. How do you know he's not breaking the law? To do it. I, how do you I know do you have he's one thing. Any law. Uh, with regards well, to well, wait a minute. Hold on a right second. Let me, Char Charlie was saying something. Let me just hear from Charlie here for a second. Then we'll get to you. you to, I just said Trump has broken many laws. The the very job he did on the, with the Ukraine was breaking the law. You can't ask a foreign country to interfere with the election. That wasn't by That's against the law. Period. That he didn't ask him to interfere with the election. He no, asked let's him not let's not rehash it, Phil, and quit giving us the Fox version of that whole story. I, okay, Fox version is the true version. You're oh, listening, really? just like the coronavirus information that Fox gave out for the longest time. Well, it's hey, a big hoax. It's a Democratic. If you got somebody to blame, go to the uh, World Health Organization. No, oh, no, no, here no. we go. Here we go. Shut up about the World Health Organization. Yeah, Just because that's the new Trumpism. Yesterday, you wouldn't even know known what the World Health Organization was. So yeah, don't give me that. Don't even start with me on that one. I, I, I've heard their music, Tommy, and 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 all of those. Yeah. You know, hear the the that's like hear the blaming crickets, the League don't? of Nations for World War Two. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but here here's the here's the item I come back to. I, I am teaching research methods this, this semester, and it says, uh, without reliable published research, we would be prisoners of what we alone see and hear, locked in the opinions of the moment. No doubt most of our everyday opinions are sound, but mistaken ideas, even ugly and dangerous ones, flourish because too many people accept what they hear or, or what they want to believe on not very good evidence. And when they act on those opinions, they can lead themselves and us into disaster. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what it's about. It's like Trump can spin anything as long as we're not willing to empirically investigate. Well, you know, how do you support uh, saying that he's bought a company or bought into a company that has that makes this drug that the government bought 29 million doses of? And, uh, you know, when it when it's blatantly false. And, that wasn't and, that isn't blatantly false, Phil. I've seen the uh, the uh, the research on it. He, he bought it through a fund. He bought into a fund that has as one of its holdings that particular drug. So you know how how crazy that is. And when what, did he what, buy that fund? When I have I have no idea, Phil. But before the coronavirus, Phil. Phil, you're saying it's not true. You can't prove it's not. It's not true. Well, you can't prove it's true. No, but you're the, you're the one that's accusing me of saying it's not true. Any, any you're, number you're of people have been old. reporting it in the last couple of days. I, you know, and not, that, that's where we go wrong, though. It, it wasn't just this one story. It's that there's so many that it's, uh, you know, and, and that benefits Trump because then it muddies the waters. But where there's smoke, there's fire. And, and I think that some of these things have to be going on. I do not believe for a second that Trump sits there in the office and says, I do this altruistically, that I, I, I and my family are going to become go to the poorhouse based on what we're doing. I don't believe that for a second. I think he has other ways because that's his M.O. That's what he's done his whole his whole entire life. It's like he's Bernie okay. Sanders. You know what he's done his whole entire life. You can just see. So, you know, he's making money. And I don't mind, by the way, I don't mind if he makes money. What I mind is when he covers it up or pretends it doesn't exist. I'd feel much better if he just come forward and say, Oh, yeah, I have stock in that company and I made a lot of money. OK, no big deal. Uh, that I would be more OK with. You're accusing him of something that there is no. Not proof. accusing. Yeah. I'm saying that. No, there's no accusation here. I'm saying he based bought on the way he operates, I don't believe. And again, it's a belief. So I'm, I'm qualifying that. I believe that he makes money in numerous ways based on his position and that he's aware of it. And that he just he looks doesn't care about it. it. Looks the other way. Well, you know, uh, didn't they uh, they order eight years of his tax returns? Uh, I thought that that was uh, he won't turn them was over. He's never released his he tax returns. He won't return. turn them over. I yes, but I understand that they uh, uh, they ordered those eight years, and uh, you know, yeah. uh, you'll get to see them when he's out never got the face mask. I don't have as i said years down the road we're going to see and it's going to be amazing i agree with you well when the uh, when the proof is out there i'll look at it when it's accusation and innuendo i'm not interested 
Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Either way. It is an innuendo, though. He does. He his the the family owns stock in this trust, which as as its um, uh, as it's one of its components, uh, the company that makes this drug. Which, by the way, since Trump has uh, uh, touted this, and it, today he touted it again. Yeah. You know, in spite of the fact that his people have told him, "Stop it already." You know, you're hurting people by doing it because the drug isn't proven. The drug in in usage with uh, with other drugs that are used along with it to make it work, if it does work, they don't even know that, um, causes heart attacks. He said if somebody is dying and... Phil, you... that's not the point. You're not listening. The fact is that if they take this medicine, then it's not if they are dying, they will die. Yeah, well, some of them don't have a choice. Phil, and, that's uh, not the point. The point is you're not a doctor. You don't go around prescribing medicine to people. And a medicine which is used by lupus patients who need it as a constant regimen, and they now can't get it because it is in such incredible supply because doctors are prescribing it to their people who say, I want to try it because I think it might prevent me from getting the coronavirus. That's uh, a that's not a responsible yeah. president, yeah. Phil. That is somebody who is harming this country and is killing us I, all. Yes, you, Jeff. You, shut you, up. Jeff. Shut that's up, Phil. Name. It's Jeff's turn. Yes, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Bree, can you answer a question for me? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you explain the concept of that Hawkins razor? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly the point. It's it. It's based on the preponderance of evidence. The simplest explanation is is probably true. It's you know what what Trump what we have in the White House right now is we have public relations for uh, essentially. I don't see leadership. I see public relations. Uh, there's a difference. You know, Trump is very good about getting. Hey, this is just like the flu. It's it's like and uh, it's a miracle. It's going to go away. We got this totally under control. Now, I understand when he says he wants to be cheerful, he wants to be positive. Absolutely. That is a great position. But not when not when people are dying in the droves. Uh, you, that's not the right attitude. You, you don't say like a miracle. We've got this under control and like a miracle will go away. These words have meaning, you know, and and I in any other situation. It's not a big deal, and, we, and I laugh at it. I think he's funny, and I love the media gets to cover him, and he says crazy things. That's fine, but this is probably the one case where, you know, a disease is spreading, and it's going to continue, and you can't wish it away, and you can't you can't say, well, there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know, uh, <laughs> not for a lot of people, and you know, just have some compassion for them. Uh, I just don't see it. And that's what I want out of my leader. And, you know, that, that's what I expect out of them. And I'm not getting it. Yeah. Well, this is a guy in his early 70s that's not going to be around that long, possibly get, get voted out in November. So he's always been a grifter and looking for the quick spot. So I, I think that's probably what's going on, right? He, he, he doesn't care about the consequences. And you're, you're uh, I'm not sure what. What's the name of uh, his title at bar, uh, mm -hmm. Attorney General? He even said he doesn't care. He says, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to live forever. I, I, we're going to get as much stuff as we want done now, and worry about, and not even worry about the consequences. They're not going to be around. Basically. And Trump will still be around if he loses the election, uh, even if you know by some how he he agrees to leave. He'll just go over to Trump Hotel. And he'll invite OAN over and they'll have their own, you know, so every time the real president has a uh, or the elected president has a uh, press conference, he'll have one over in Trump Hotel. He'll make it look just like the and he can still use the presidential seal, I think, yeah. because, you know, it, once he's been in office, let me, let me, it, it could yeah. potentially be let me, really let me crazy. read something to Phil. President Donald Trump indirectly owns a minute stake in a company that makes the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine, whatever it's called, which has been aggressively he's been promoting as a treatment for the coronavirus and was lobbied to use it by Fox News host Laura Ingram. Boy, this is, these are medical authorities we're talking about mm -hmm. here. And two doctors who frequently come on her show. 
So there is your there is your proof that he has money in it. Oh, and and you, and you know who I, I, wait a minute. And you know who I'm quoting? Uh, who? Newsmax. All right. He owns a minute. That is according to who cares how a, big of a piece. That's a, you know, that's I mean, a, if the guy was looking to profit, he would do what those uh, Feinstein that, and those that, other senators that, that, that's did. That's according to Newsmax. Okay, that's huh? according to Newsmax. According to the uh, to Yahoo yeah, News, one President, President Donald Trump Republican. reportedly owns a stake in a company that produces the drug uh, uh, that he's repeatedly touted as an anti as a coronavirus treatment. Trump has a small personal financial interest in Sanofi, the French drug maker that makes uh, Planequin. Planequin? Well, anyway, it's a version of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, and uh, in addition, Sanofi's largest stockholders include mutual fund company run by major Republican donor Ken Fisher. Okay, so. Sounds good to me. It doesn't sound good to me. He's, he's but, trying to oh, tout uh, one of his friend's stocks. You know what the uh, stock uh, symbol is for that company? It's probably a skull and crossbones. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to look at it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I do have five shares of uh, the. You know, Dow. Phil. Ever since you bought stock, you suddenly sound like you're a big <laughs> spender, and you don't have as much hey, stock as I'm I do, down, or I I'm as I used to have. By the way, what? I'm down a hundred. I'm down a hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. Uh, for uh, since well, the uh, crash. Yeah, well, you you got a lot of stock there, Phil. Five shares. F five shares uh, amounting to how much money? Uh, well, it started as a thousand, and uh, it was my first experiment or uh, foray. Yeah, I just opened yeah. up the account, and then as soon as I opened it up, it went into the well, gutter. I, I'm I'm so, going to come to you for stock advice, like I would go to Trump for medical advice. I okay. Have the answer, though. Kevin, Whatever I buy, do the uh, uh, okay, Phil, uh, hold it down for a little bit here. Let some other people talk. Let other people breathe because uh, Kevin the other night felt that he, when he tried to say something, he started talking and you jumped in and then he couldn't finish his thought. So watch out when you start jumping in, okay? Kevin, right. how do you feel about all this, my friend? I gave him great stock advice. I told him not to buy, yeah. right? <laughs> and you still did. Yeah. <laughs> so you, so he doesn't even listen to you when you're talking on this show. It's other times no, too. No, no. See, just you probably didn't hear me. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. <laughs> Jeez, Almighty! It's more than. Did I you can. did you hear him describing that whole thing the other day on the on his press conference? The the, the lady that went to the. Dent, uh, oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah! I saved her yeah, life. To get the prescription at ten o'clock at night, and she, she, and she was a Democrat. She there. was a, she was Democrat. A Democrat, to a black lady oh. Democrat. Yeah, and every demographic possible. Black lady Democrat oh. went to went to Rite Aid to get that prescription, and then came back and it worked. It worked. Nice. Here, here's later, the. She was all yeah. cured. What, 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 it was, what, what, it was what, like what, an evangelist speech. I couldn't believe it. I, 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 yeah, Kevin, what were you saying, Char it, Charles? Uh, Char it, it, Charlie it was talking, Phil. All right. Yes, Charlie. No, I just, I just sarcastically said that 15 minutes later she was all cured. Yeah. Here's what happens. Let's say she did go do it, okay? And let's say she didn't get the heart attack and she lived and, and survived, okay? Let's just say that for a moment. There is no proof that because she took that pill that that is what cured her or she didn't just resolve the illness. And that's why you have studies. And that's why you don't just blatantly tell people to start using drugs. Uh, yes, um, uh, and Phil, when you, when you put yourself, uh, take your picture off the screen, then all I get is the Skype logo. So please don't do that. Um, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to think. Where are we? Um, okay. Uh, but uh, so, so, yeah, that was pretty pathetic. That was pretty pathetic the other day. Uh, I, 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 the other thing that's been bothering me lately is that he goes, uh, oh, and what news organization are you from? And somebody goes, I'm from such and such. Oh, yeah, that's fake news. Mm -hmm. He tries to any time anybody just asks an honest question of him, he's insulted by the fact that he's being called to account for something. And that's why you hold a press conference. 
And to simply dismiss anybody's question as being fake news, there's no such thing as fake news in a question. There's fake news in reporting the answer to that question. If it isn't reported yeah. properly. Yes. Okay, occasionally he will describe it. I like that. That's a good question. Yeah. 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 It's it's a and I, that used to be funny to me, and I actually enjoyed it on occasion. But I can't watch anything he's on now because I, it just does. It's not funny anymore for me. Well, you know what? You, you know, know what? You know who's it's not interesting. You know anymore. who's disappeared I'm from these. Tune into a comedy show for fun, not not our president. No, you see, here's the thing. She, he um, there was a woman from uh, News One America, right? who was at every one of his press conferences, even when they had less people at the press conferences and they all had to draw straws to go in, she was always there, asking him the very positive questions. All right? And the other night uh, on John Oliver's show, he pointed out this that. woman, and all the time she had appeared there, and all the questions she was asking, how nice he was to her, and ever since then, she hasn't been there. <laughs> Wow, you know, I mean, uh, and she was always put in as the uh, what can we call it? The I don't know, the wild card, the foil, the foil. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, she she was the fall guy. She was the person that was in there to make him look good. Yes, Phil, I see your hand waving at me. Well, hey, uh, the, she was in the press room without authorization or credential. And she, the reason she hasn't been there is she'd been removed because she was going in uh, and she wasn't credentialed to to be there. So she was taking spot that uh, should have belonged. To I believe else. you're talking about somebody else. No, that's uh, that. She was from o, uh, One News Network, huh. and that's why she was taken out of there. Or O A N. Oh yeah, sure she was, Phil. Uh, she oh, just. I, I, news she that was what was taken out she she disappeared the minute that john oliver let the world know she existed and was there all the time asking the positive question she may have been asking the positive questions but she was shown the door because she wasn't supposed no, to she be there was shown the, the door was she was shown the door after john oliver revealed her uh i don't uh know one way or another if john oliver broke it or not oh but, he absolutely uh, broke it he, when they discovered that she was uh, uh, going into the room without authorization, uh, she was. Uh, they pulled her credentials. Well, okay. She was. She was invited. She was, at first she was going in, even though they agreed a certain number would go in for social distancing. She would go in anyway, and that's when the, you know, the pool of the Reporters Association, I think, pulled her, and then mm -hmm. she still kept coming because she was invited personally by. The press secretary, the White House press secretary. Yes, there's so the she, answer. That's my understanding. One? I thought that they uh, that they pulled. I don't know. I don't know any one of the recent ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, the one that was fired before they even but gave a press conference. That's, yeah, it's about public relations. She, that's why it exists, yeah. and and that's what we can look forward to. You know, in November, perhaps we'll yeah. see. No oh, boy, how are we even gonna? Here's a question: How are we even gonna hold an election? You know, that's where I was going. You, did you, what's going to happen yeah, we can't. now that, you know, this is all settled out. It looks like Biden's there. Well, what's going to happen with the with uh, Bernie hanging on to delegates and, you know, with uh, Trump insisting there's not going to be a vote by mail, you know? Yep. Look uh, at yeah, you, you, you can, it, that was another big lie that he told the other day is that you can't yep. trust vote by mail. Yeah, because people in fact they did stuffing. they did research on it, and there was only one case, and that was like somewhere in the 1920s or something, where yeah. one 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 vote got that was mailed in was illegal. They, yeah, they get it, they get dumped, and they people sit in rooms and stuff ballots. That doesn't happen. No, and and he, he made oh oh you can't do that. What we're going to do it your way of che of cheating by getting the Russians to do it for us. <laughs> He's setting the table in case he loses to do nothing yeah. but just destroy Absolutely. our election process and take away any kind of trust that people have in it. He's do he's setting the table. You're right. He's setting oh. the scenario. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, they're going to take well, He's been kind of doing that for a while. They, oh, yeah. Remember when he thought he was going to lose, the election was rigged, and yeah. he becomes elected, and that went away. Yeah. But it was and rigged. If, so. if the virus sticks around, then uh, I think Trump wins because uh, uh, it will depress the vote tremendously. And the way that Democrats win is by getting out the vote. And disproportionately, the people who are affected by this, who don't have health care, who don't have money, they would vote you know, for the Democrats. So it, mm. it, it looks as if it can keep going. Actually, this could benefit Trump at the election. Do you think so? Hard to believe if people are still what? dying and his, his uh, bumbling of the entire pandemic... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, Why would I mean, you the most that? affected portion of the population is older people. And, I mean, older people with a stick up their ass are people who are going to vote for him anyway. So, I mean, you really never can't tell about that. But, I mean, it's 50-50. It's I mean, if older people are scared to go out and younger people vote, I don't really imagine that a majority of them are going to vote for Trump. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are some younger people who vote for all lines of party and belief, but, yeah. you know, I don't know. I mean, the elections are run by the states anyway. I mean, the federal government doesn't have too much to say, you know, other than setting the day that the election will be held. But past that, you know, the elections are run by the individual states. So it, it's going to be on them to decide I mean, if he doesn't like that a, that an entire state decides the entire state will vote by mail, that, that, that's tough shit. Mm -hmm. That's the state's, you know, decision. And if in a state were to make that decision, I don't want to hear Trump, I don't want to hear Phil, and I don't want to hear any person of the Republican Party suddenly abandoning their state's rights mantra that they've been singing about <laughs> for the last 200 years. I mean... If a state wants to vote by mail, who is the federal government to tell them that's not good enough? And if all 50 states decide to vote by mail and Trump wins, and I come on this program and say I'm upset that Joe Biden lost because we voted by mail and I think that's horseshit, is Phil going to say, oh, no, that, that was fine. Voting by mail was the way to go. I mean, uh, the, the hypocrisy, I mean, you can shake your head up and down, and that's fine. But the hypocrisy that wipes off of you and some other people on a daily basis is wearing thin with me. I mean, it, it's just, and I've been fair from the from from 2013 when this whole deal started. You know, spades are spades. It is what it is. I've come on this program. I criticized President Obama on many occasions. Uh, I mean, I give you what I think. I'll give you historical fact. But some of this stuff that, I mean. Yeah. You're wearing people out with it, and it's damaging to our political system. It's damaging to this country, and it's hurting people's lives in a real way for people not to just, you know, say what they actually think or what they actually believe and, and, and defend it with facts and have a decent conversation about it. I've never gotten on anyone for disagreeing with what I believe. Not once. Hey, you shouldn't think that because I think this, so you should think that too. I don't pull that garbage, but, it's, you know, it just, it wears me out. And then when you're about to lose an argument, you make a joke. I mean, give me a fucking hey, break, man. I always make jokes, but you know what? No, uh, you don't always make jokes. I, you try to make eight jokes. People, eight people uh, telling me that what I think is wrong. And uh, if you don't and like... I've defended you <laughs> wait, on many wait a minute. occasions. It's, uh, sorry about that. Jeff, you're... Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just... I, 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 Wait, wait, Jeff? Uh, first of all, I think what Josh said was very well put together. Thank you. Yes. That, that's very well put together. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that if the commander of a major-sized naval vessel had written a letter to his commanding officer and said, you're not listening to me, I'm having trouble, I'm not getting the resources I need, if you don't start listening to me, we're going to have a major issue in a short period of time. And someone had leaked that letter in the Obama administration, and Obama had treated that captain the way that he was treated under this administration, and Trump's the commander-in-chief. I don't care if he personally did it or he didn't do it. And that guy would have been literally run off the ship on a rail and then sent his acting 
secretary of the Navy down there to show his fucking ass and do what he did and then have to quit the next day in embarrassment. This would be a national scandal that Fox News would be plugging. Minute, at, I mean, they would literally be on the air 24 hours a day. This Obama doesn't support the military. Look, he doesn't give them what he needs. He's, he's anti-military. I mean, it, there would be no end to this garbage. And, and all this and guy, all right the, all this guy did, really, was cry and plead that he needed help for his crew. He wanted to say right. he didn't want he if 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 his people were going to die, it was going to be because the ship was sunk by the enemy, not and, because and, they got this, some disease that could have been prevented. And this guy's not the guy who even leaked the letter. He sent it to his commanding officer and up the chain the way he was supposed to. It's someone else who put their eyes on it that leaked it out there, not, not this gentleman. And all I've heard for all these years from people like Phil and other people, members of his, oh, you got to trust these commanders in the field, you know? I mean, you, we send these guys to West Point, and we train them up, and you, you got to give them what they need, and you, you got to listen to them. And then one of them does exactly what you want him to do, and you, you, you fire him, and you ruin his career, and you try to ruin his life, and they're going to keep doing it, and, and who says what? Well, you know, that's Trump. That's just, that's just the way he is. I don't like his methods, but he, but he gets stuff done. That's like me saying, hey, the head coach of the team beats his players with a baseball bat, but shit, they win games. I wish he wouldn't do it, but, <laughs> man, you know. That's, that's your fucking break. Are wrong. All that's right? what I say about it. The ends that's don't great. always just justify the means. As long as you get the end game, it doesn't matter how you get there. Hey, the guy. I have never I seen a guy leave of his fired so many people. That a month before, the, the the Trump would say, "What wonderful this guy is! How smart he is! How educated he is! I, he's he's a good friend of mine. I know him very well. I trust him. This and that." Six weeks later, he's fired. Yeah. And I never yeah, knew the guy. I never knew the guy. I and I never knew him. I've never met him before. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a bunch of I mean, I'm just saying, all I'm saying is this is example 947 of if this had happened five years ago, we have real trouble with what was going on. Yeah. And I don't hear anything about it. So all I'm saying is, you know, what's going to happen two years from now if the same person's not in office? I mean, it, I guess it's just going to be a free-for-all from here on out. You can just do whatever the fuck you want because they're going to be okay with it. So... But I don't think that's going to be the case. And it really shouldn't be, because you shouldn't be allowed to get away with this stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hurst, we haven't heard from you in a while here. And I, I should have, maybe in the beginning, said when I say Jeff, there are two Jeffs on the panel tonight. Uh, uh, so, yeah, no, so I'll yeah no problem. It's just that you're, you're talking uh, domestic politics. As a Canadian, I don't really have a lot to say about it. I don't, it just, it's pretty silly, to be honest with you, that... You know, people that defend them are only doing it because they're going to look like assholes if they don't. Because, you know, why would you back someone that's so blatantly wrong? So you, you have to ignore all the stuff that he does and make excuses for it. Well, Otherwise, how you well you're it? out there. You're out there in the Canadian hinterlands. OK, uh, uh, what what is the attitude about about Trump? Out in the well, Canadian it, hinterland. It's, it's 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 interesting because we're a big country up where I'm where I live. Mm -hmm. We're oil and gas co uh, country, so we're actually closer to Trump than we are to Trudeau. And uh, like if I was in Quebec, calling you from Quebec, I'd be, you know, I'd I'd, I'd feel the exact opposite. I, I'm all free free enterprise and pull your up yourself up by your bootstraps and all that, right? And a lot of people, you know, I've got a lot of cousins in the states and they, they love Trump. And, you know, they might not like what he does, but he, he likes they, they like what he's doing. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I personally, I, I, I'm right in the middle of the road. I, I'm a, you know, I, I'm all about free enterprise and all that stuff. And, but I also love that I, I don't have to go broke if I want to go to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have something they want to say here? Oh, well. Let's have this moment of silence then. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking today, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking that it'd be very nice if after this whole thing is over with, or at least we're back on the mend again, that we do hold uh, a moment of silence for all the people that have died of this horrible yeah. uh, disease. Uh, 
uh, in the entire world. I mean, right now, as of this moment, uh, and let me just re refresh this page, as of this moment, um, there are uh, 1,484,811 totally confirmed cases and total deaths in the world, 88,538. Yes, uh, Bree. One, one of the other things I'm getting a little tired of is seeing all the celebrities in their uh, you know, football sized homes telling us how, you know, what, you know, what a struggle it is to, to try to deal with things. I'm even, you know, even Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson, I'm, you know, always love them national treasure, Tom Hanks, but the, some of the things they say, it, it just, I don't know in this, if, if the end of the article doesn't say, and these people have donated uh, 5 million for the, for the cause, then I'm suspect about them. You know, I, I don't need to see them jumping around. I am always suspicious. saying, woe is me. Yeah, I'm always suspicious of people who in times like this do something good and then let everybody know they did it. Um, uh, I'll give you an example of somebody who was the opposite way. David Letterman has given more money to various charities and schools and so on than almost anybody you can name in show business, okay? And has told each and every one of them, if any of you say where this money came from, you're not going to get any more from me. I don't want any credit for this. And I mean, this is a ball state owes, a, owes their livelihood to David Letterman. Um, there are, uh, there, it, it, there were sto there's stories I heard about him, and I won't, I won't tell them because he doesn't want the, didn't want the world to know about them. But things that he did that I just went, you know, if people knew this, they would think differently about David Letterman because he is very, very philanthropic. And yet he doesn't want anybody to know because he's saying, that's not the reason I'm doing it, and I don't want the publicity for it. And so when I hear that somebody does something, then all of a sudden I hear about it. Like I heard today, uh, what's his name? The guy who dresses up as a woman. What's his name? The, the You know who I'm talking about. Tyler Perry. Oh. Tyler Perry. Uh, <laughs> he did something very nice today. He went into a, um, into a supermarket and sat there and paid everybody's bill for like a couple of hours. So they all got free food. And I went, that's really wonderful. But then I stopped to think about it, and I said, that is wonderful, but how did I find out about it? I mean, couldn't he have just gone into it and done it? And maybe, maybe somebody who he did it for told the world about it. I'm going to give him credit that way. But, you know, the, the act of giving is the reward in and of itself and not uh, the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the, the, publicity. the publicity you get out of it. And I see a lot of these businesses advertising, and they do this whole thing about we are America and we're strong and we're behind you 100%. Shell gas, you know. And I go... <laughs> Couldn't you have done it like in just little letters on the bottom of the screen so that because you have to say who bought the time? Uh, do you have to put your logo up there? Can't you, you just do it because it's the act of doing it that's important? You know, so, um, you know, I just, you know, I, uh, yeah. You know what I'm struck by? And I was thinking about this today because I was sitting outside again working for most of the day. Mm -hmm. I remember I was in New York City for 9-11. Were you there, Alex, in, tw in 2001? No, no, I wasn't. No. Okay. I was so I worked in New York City and lived in Queens back in those days. And the feeling, the attitude of people, the, the solemn behavior of people, everything came to a stop. 9-11. How many people perished? 2,500? Uh, 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 it's about 3,000. 3,000. A little shy of 3,000. How many people have perished because of this? And I don't, I see people, my neighbors, I got to tell you, I've got a bunch of neighbors. I don't know where their IQs are, but all the kids are playing. It's like in, they're in the backyard. Yeah. And they're yeah. playing like it's a summer day and there's no nothing. And the adults are all standing. There's no social distancing. And it's it's like this did, isn't really happening. I just, there's a, 
huge difference in the 3,000 people we lost on 9-11 versus what's going on with this pandemic and how many people it's killed. And everybody is just, it's not affecting me and nobody is, there's just a different tenor. People and, and also during that time, Rob, I felt that President Bush brought us together. Yes. I, I really thought he was great, you know. And Me too. right now, I, Listen, I would put, a guy I can't I would stand. Have Bill Gates in charge. Yeah, I, I would put I, I, Bill it, Gates in charge yeah, yeah. of this whole thing because he seems to understand. When I hear him talk, he's learned, he's, he's compassionate, he backs up what he says, he knows he has plans for what he's doing. Bill Gates to me gives me far uh, greater sense that we could get through this. I cannot watch a Donald Trump press conference. I cannot. I, it's I public don't. relations versus reality. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't. Yeah. I, I Charlie, just turn it quickly. Let's go to Charlie. We're running out of time. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. I just want to mention it. Even Bush, when he had his briefings on 9-11, you never had people going up there before they gave any facts saying, oh, what a wonderful job Bush is doing. Oh, Bush is just the greatest person to ever live. And nobody can speak at a, a Trump conference without him, without saying that stuff first. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it, it, what, 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 we, what we need at a time like this is somebody to rally us. And we don't have anybody rallying us, except for if you're in New York, except Mario Cuomo is doing a great job of rallying us. You know, he has been. A very, I can't say calming effect on us, but he has certainly had. We feel that there's a there's a ca a, 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 a captain at the helm, okay, and there's somebody who's literally moving every ounce of his abilities to try and lick this thing and to get us to help him to do it, and that's the kind of leadership you know you, you need. And uh, I, I just wish we had it more from the White House. We get it more from uh, his vice president than we do from him. You know. Could, could you imagine in World War II if Trump were president? Oh, why? I was you thinking about prepared. that tonight. You're if on we, your own. If we were in the middle of a war, <laughs> how would he handle it? <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's our theme playing. That's and uh, I have a whole bunch of people to thank here. First of all, Rob Alfano and then uh, Phil Meyer. And of course, Josh Wheeler and Charlie and Kevin and Jeff and Jeff and uh, and uh, um, Bree. Boy, that's a mm -hmm. mouthful. Hey, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave you goodbye as well. Okay, here we go. Goodbye, everybody. There they go. Okay, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's all she wrote. Let me just uh, hang up on these people and get the lines ready. For our next program, which is, of course, the, uh, the uh, uh, what's the name of it? Oh, it's The Intersection with Jack Bishop. Okay, all right. And uh, I'll be back again tomorrow night uh, with more of this insanity. Uh, I probably won't do a show during the day tomorrow, but uh, when I do the next time, I will I will put it up on, the, on Facebook so people will know it for sure. All right? Okay. Anyway, uh, that's it for me tonight. Uh, see you tomorrow night, uh, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, and good night, everybody, and be safe.